my name is Gal, Gal Ziton, like uh, Gal Gadot. Uh, I'm uh, from uh, Octopi. Uh, I'm 20 years experience with the business intelligence domain, starting with uh, at the beginning as a BI developer, later on business analyst, data analyst, and after that data architect, and um, after that a private consultant. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. I think this is the mic. Adam? Now? Can you hear me? No? Louder. Louder? Adam. <laughs> okay. Now it's okay? Okay. So, a uh, lot of experience of the data intelligence and the business intelligence, a uh, consultant of uh, big enterprises, and, uh, and then six years ago uh, founded Octopi. Uh, and today we will not talk about Octopi, we will talk about oh, the places you will go with data literacy. Uh, most of you, I, I guess that uh, all of you uh, know Dr. Seuss, who is the famous, one of the most famous sentences that uh, uh, hold the places you will go. The idea of this sentence is, sent this sentence is to, uh, for a new beginning, if you want to start a new way. And this is a motivated uh, book with a motivated sentence that uh, drive you to try and to explore a new things. And don't wait at the waiting place. So you need to go and to explore and to take adventure and to find new things. And the idea is don't wait, things come to you. You need to, to accomplish and you need to, um, to find the way to achieve what you want to do best for you. And if you wait for someone to give you, you can wait and wait and wait and uh, it can, sometimes it's not happen and it's too late. So this is a, um, when you are starting a new way, this is a good book to give us to someone that uh, want to, to find this new adventure, new challenges. Um, how it's connected to data literacy, you probably ask yourself. So the context to data literacy, if you use and understand the, the data, you will find great new valuable information for your organization. Don't wait, something will happen, it, it will not happen. You need to do an analysis and you need to do kind of insight on your data in order to find new valuable things. There are a lot of goodies in the data, so that's, that's the reason this sentence is here. Uh, by the way, if you have any question or something that you want to, to add, be my guest, you can, it's, a, it's an open discussion. So I read a lot of on the web and there, there are some different approaches how data literacy and data governance uh, come together and what is the difference between them. From what, from what, what I heard from uh, analysts and uh, also from the web and from what I read and uh, what I understand, this is the best clear way to define the difference between data literacy and data governance. Of course, there is a common attribute and overlap between them, but the main, the main idea of data literacy is, a, is you, how, do you, how you use the data. And data governance is how you manage the data. It's, uh, it's different, but again, there is an overlap between them. Uh, for example, if you want to find where the data come from, and if you want to understand the data, and if you want to analyze the data, this is more focus, more uh, relevant to the data literacy. The data governance more for the policies, how to manage the policies, the processes, workflows, and of course regulation, security. Uh, so this is more for the data governance. The overlap is of course if you want to manage 
then you need to understand the, the, the data. You, you can't manage something that you, you are not understanding uh, the data. Any question about that, about this slide? Okay. Uh, again, you will find more concept at the web. Uh, some of them is data literacy separated completely from the data governance and uh, also data discovery. Uh, from my perspective and my knowledge uh, and what I read in the book and talked with a lot of analysts, uh, data discovery is part of for both of them, for data, dis data literacy and data governance. Uh, a day in the life of data ecosystem, as you know, uh, data is everywhere and data is scattered everywhere on the BI landscape of the organization. And many times the VP sales or VP marketing want to generate a report or want to find a report, a new uh, a report that exists in the company and you can't find it. So what he's doing, you're probably familiar with that, he's going to the, uh, uh, to the BI manager, ask him, where can I find a report that generates revenue for quarter number three or number four? And then the BI manager asks him to go to the data architect or he reach to the data architect to find the report. And then they check what is the requirement, what, he, what he's looking for, why he need that, and where the data come from. And they design the report. Most of the time, if they not find the report, they are duplicating the same report again because they can't find the report. And in some other cases, the one that the, other, the data analyst that we create the report at the beginning is not longer in the company. No one, no one know where the report, and it's frustrating, and the process is long, and this is our day. And it's time to take action. It's time to take action to manage if you are, want to implement data governance or to understand how to use the data. And data literacy is one of the things that can help you to, to understand and to find and how to use the data. The major challenge, the major challenge of uh, uh, today uh, that literacy can solve is the lack of visibility and control of the data that's scattered through the entire uh, BI landscape. And I have a slide here to demonstrate only some of the system across the BI landscape and the data intelligence landscape. You can see the ETL, we have Informatica and data stage and SSIS that lots of organization shift to Azure Data Factory, and uh, the new, uh, the new uh, player in the area, the Matillion and Talent, uh, and of course we have the tradition, the uh, stored procedure and package from SQL Server and the Oracle. Same thing with the database and data warehouse, lots of Hadoop and uh, lots of SQL Server and Snowflake, of course, Teradata, uh, Oracle, SQL and uh, uh, now we have also the Azure Data Lake and analysis services and reporting. Why all those systems here? Because we, do, we did a survey uh, to Octopi and uh, also we use uh, uh, Dataversity and the uh, other uh, firm that help us to do kind of uh, analysis. And, it's, and it seems that BI Group invest more than 50% of their time and the effort to manually find and understand the data, the metadata. Uh, why is that? Because almost any organization use different vendors on their BI landscape. And I spoke with hundreds of them. And all the time, I ask the basic question, do you know how many reports do you have in your organization? I don't think or I don't remember that uh, someone answered this question even if in a 10% uh, variety from the actual, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, correct answer. Uh, same thing with the ETL. Do you know how many processes do you have in your organization? 
again, uh, most of the time, uh, all, almost 100% of them didn't know the, the correct answer. So that means that we need to take an action and uh, to find a solution for that. Uh, data literacy is one of the solutions. Uh, data literacy, you need to understand the lineage also for, from the DB sources and the operational system and the source system from the marketing, CRM, ERP, all the finance, HR system that flow through the ETL to the database and the data warehouse and from them to the analysis and the reporting services and the, and the analytics. In order to understand all those data flow and the downstream and the upstream and the impact analysis and root cause analysis, you need to implement um, solutions that will help you to manage and to use the data. And as you know, the, today, lots of organizations use more than one system, even more than two systems. I suppose that if I ask how many reporting systems do you have, one, two, three, most of them, most of you will raise their hands that you have two or three uh, reporting system in your organization. That's because uh, one of the reasons is the BI self-services. The Tableau, the Power BI, the Looker, that uh, the Nodo, that uh, generated more and more report. Some of them are duplication from the, uh, from the origin reporting system. Uh, I can share with you that uh, uh, last week I spoke with uh, one of our customers that use Cognos and also uh, Click, ClickSense. And we found that there are 20% duplication between the reporting of the Cognos and the ClickSense, not because of immigration, because departments start to create their own reporting, system, reporting uh, uh, reports, and they didn't know that those reports already exist in Cognos. So this is, uh, and it's growing more and more. Ah, why it's not? Main challenges in data environment, as, uh, as we speak, uh, as I uh, explained at the next uh, previous slide, the growing of the amount of data in the organization. Uh, there are a lot of reasons. Uh, I can share with you that uh, next slide, there is some uh, blogs and uh, uh, survey that uh, you can see that the data is going to grow and increase, growing rapidly in the next uh, few years and it will not be stopped. Second is the increased pressure of the data teams for analytic and report. I will talk about it later on. And also, uh, inefficient use of data and lack of independence in using data. That means that data is scattered all over. And because of that, it's hard to manage and hard to define definitions uh, for the data asset in the data intelligence. Also, the consuming of the data, uh, because most of the organization are data-driven, uh, take decision through data-driven, and it's hard to locate which asset to use, which report to use, what are the ETLs that you need to run in order to fill the, uh, the report that you want to use, and actually, you can find a lot of ETL that runs, load data to a tables, but those tables are open tables. No one consumes those tables. And that's the, one of the biggest uh, challenges of today. Even if you want to do a migration from one ETL to another ETL, you want to understand what you need to migrate from, for example, from SSIS to Azure Data Factory, then you understand, if you go deep inside to understand and to map what do you need to do in order to do the migration, you will find that 20, even more, 30% of the ETL are not necessary anymore. Um, lots of business analysts and data analysts duplicating assets. Duplicating assets because it's not managed 
There are a lot of report that uh, redundant report that duplicated, and they already exist at the system. And there is no one source of the truth for the organization. Data literacy can solve this problem. And if we go to the next, next one is the regulation compliance. As you know, today we have the GDPR, CCPA, and all the uh, PII um, regulation compliance. And some of the assets that is not that managed or not managed, if they manage, not all the assets are sensitive. And for the, those that are sensitive, some of them are the combination between them make them sensitive. For example, first name is not sensitive, last name is not sensitive. But first name, last name, and the email is sensitive. And we need to manage not one asset by one, we need to manage the combination of the asset in order to define what is sensitive and what is not sensitive. So this is another challenge that today we have it in our data environment. The, the last one is the loss of uh, treable knowledge. Communication. This is one of the biggest challenges at the, at the data environment. It can be because the BI teams are separated in different areas or there is some uh, organization that not implemented a proper collaborative and communication between the, the, uh, the team. And by that, the, this is very hard to manage the data environment. Also, there are some people that left the organization and take with, take with, them, with them the knowledge of some of the uh, process design, uh, architect, uh, of the processes and the, if it's business analyst and data analyst also the, the existing of the reporting. So this is one of the challenges that we need to share and we need to do a collaboration between the team. Uh, without that, it will be very hard to manage the data environment. This slide will show you the amount, the growing of the amount of data. You can see that the uh, World Economic, Statista, and uh, Science Focus uh, showing us the growing, the ever-growing amount of data in the organization from year to year. It's exponential growing. Uh, look at, about, look at the, 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 even Twitter. Every 24 hours, 500 million tweets are published on Twitter. That, that's amazing. It's, it's growing data uh, efficiently. So this is a very challenge for our data environment. Uh, regarding the pressure, this is all of you at the same boat. Lots of pressure from, uh, from the business, the business demand, the business request. There are lots of projects right now because the organization is a data-driven organization. Migration project, today we are in an era with a lot of migration. Uh, there is a snowflake, the data warehouse in the cloud. Lots of uh, uh, organization move from uh, the tradition uh, SQL Server, Oracle, and the other database and data, data warehouse to the cloud, to the snowflake. Same thing with the uh, talent and the Azure Data Factory and the Power BI on the cloud and Tableau on the cloud all the traditional legacy systems, such as Cognos, Business Object, uh, Oracle, OBIE, move to the cloud. So lots of migration outside. And this is, a, again, this is another challenge because the business want to do the migration and also the IT want to do the, the, the business intelligence, want to do the migration, but the business is not, is not stopping. We need to continue do business. So um, the data team have a lot of pressure on them. So this is another challenge that data literacy can help us with, uh, with this challenge. Data literacy connects all data citizens in your ecosystem and can answer the following question. 
Where should I look for my data? Where is the data? Where the data came from? Does this de de data matter? What does the, this data represent? There is a different, by the way, a different uh, description. There is a description for data dictionary, data dictionary description, technical description, and there is a business description. It's not all the time the same. It's, uh, I can say that most of the time it's not the same. The data dictionary uh, is more focused on the technical data. It can be a description for the asset that you, you need to manage on your IT. But in the business description, it is different because it's more for the business people, for the data analyst and the data uh, architecture and data steward that want to, uh, to understand the business meaning of the asset. So also, the, is this data relevant and important to us? What is the tagging of the data asset? And how can I use this data? Do I need to uh, use it with another asset? Do I need to find the calculation of this asset? What is the calculation of the asset? If this link to another asset, there is also linking between the asset. Uh, it's called impact analysis. Uh, so as you can see, the data literacy is uh, in your ecosystem, in, uh, in, is everywhere. And we need to order it, and we need to align the, the dots and to find the one source of the truth for the uh, data environment. What are the pitfalls to achieve effective data literacy? First of all, today we are trying to manually create inventories of scheduled data assets. I can share with you that it's, it will be very hard to do it manually it will take lots of time, lots of effort, and it's involved with millions of assets that you need to input one by one to your data inventory. And this is something that you want to avoid. The solution here is the automation. The automation can help, help very, uh, in order to, to input all the in inventory to the data catalog or data literacy. And uh, also, you can also add a description automatically using machine learning, using AI. There are some solutions outside that you can use them. Uh, when you choose, when you want to manage the asset in your organization, you need to choose the right platform that will be user-friendly for the business, and not only for the IT people, because if, if, the, if it will not be user-experienced and user-friendly, the business will not use it. So you can manage the asset on your IT system, and you think that everything is managed, but when the business not use it, so actually you are manage asset for yourself, not for your organization. So this is one of the things that you need to, to achieve when you, write, when you choose the right platform to manage the asset. And the last one is the lack of ability to communicate in the context of the data. Um, the, okay, that is uh, clear. Uh, you need to communicate with all the other, uh, other stakeholders in the organization to collaborate with them to do communication between them, and even to talk about assets. Uh, lots of people want to, to share their knowledge about some of the assets and to post to one to each other about the asset, and also to, to get feedback from their colleague in the organization. The last one is the choosing the a platform doesn't include traceability through advanced multidimensional data lineage. If you don't know where, come, where the data come from and what all the manipulation between the source system to the reporting system, you probably lose some of the insight that you need to understand how to manage the data and the asset in the data literacy. Because some of the column, for example, 
uh, transform from Salesforce, for example, to the reporting system three, four, five times with the name. It's the same meaning, but the name is changed from one platform to another platform. Uh, this is something that you need to manage and also to, to, to trace uh, from sort system. In the impact analysis, it's very important because when you change something, column in Salesforce, you want to understand what are the reports that will be affected from this change before you go live to the production. Or if your report is empty or something in the report is wrong, you want to understand where, what are the ETLs, the processes that you need to run in order to uh, fill in the data in the report in the correct way. The three pillars of effective data literacy, one, automatically generating and centralized of data asset. Uh, we talk about it. This is something very important. Automation can solve lots of problems that we have. It's very hard to manage, to manage manual uh, processes and manual um, input of one by one asset into the data literacy platform. So we need to centralize everything in one place to get one source of the truth. Second one is, this is not the second one, sorry. Okay, sorry. Traceability. As I described before, we need to understand how the data flow between the system and also how the, how the data asset is created. And some of the assets in the reporting system are calculated columns. Calculated columns, uh, columns that not represent in the data warehouse or database, and even not in the source system, because they are calculated from three or four columns, and it, it will be all, only uh, exist in the reporting system. So we need to manage also those columns. The calculated columns are very, very important. If, if there is a column that's called average amount of sales, for example, you, you will not find it in the data warehouse or databases or in the source system because it's a calculation of different columns in the, in the reporting system. And when you have automation that will automate uh, the extraction of those assets from the reporting system, and inject them to the data literacy, and then you can manage those assets. And to understand how to use them and to find them, then you can get more value for the business and more value for the uh, decision maker. The, the, the third one is the build-in collaboration. It's very effective that you get the feedback from the colleague from your colleague in the, in the organization, and you can post and you can talk about, uh, about the data asset attribute, tagging, description, links, uh, with the data steward that uh, manage the asset and how to use the asset. Uh, and communication is very, very, very um, important in the data literacy aspect. And it's very effective because you get the feedback from the from the uh, from the other players in the organ in your organization. Then you can understand if there is inaccuracy in the in the description, or if it's sensitive, or if you want to get a, a rating about the item. When it's collaborative, then you get a lot of value, and uh, and it's shareable with all the other in your, in your uh, uh, organization. How can you get your organization data literate? So first of all, data discovery. You need to understand where is the data? What are the uh, systems that uh, the data inside this, those systems? What are the assets that you want to extract from those systems? I'm not sure that it's relevant to extract all the assets from the ETL, for example, or from all the processes. Maybe, from, maybe you want to extract only the source 
the source of the ETL, the target of the ETL, and not all the manipulation inside the ETLs. At the reporting system, we have the physical layer, we have the semantic layer, and we have also the presentation layer. And in the, in the Sales BI tools, we have also the report layer. Uh, so I'm not sure that you want to maintain and extract all those layers, all those assets from all those layers. So you need to define with your organization what you want to manage and what you want to extract. You can extract everything, but it can give you a lot of mess at the organization. So data discovery to find the right asset to extract. And I can share that now we have also the, for example, Power BI. You can do a live, live connection to Tabular. So there is also description in Tabular. If the organization uses those descriptions, so we need to also extract those descriptions and those assets from Tabular. But if not, so why do that? So it can be a lot of noise uh, for your data literacy. So data discovery is very uh, important. Data lineage, uh, as described before, to trace any data end-to-end -end through all the entire BI landscape. And you can do that with Excel spreadsheet or with documentation because this is not up to date today data is growing rapidly and you need to, to, to find automation to do that. If you try to maintenance an Excel, it will not be updated after one week because all the time we are changing processes, we are creating new processes, and it's very hard to, to do a manual maintenance without automation. So data lineage is very important for data literacy. The last one is data catalog. Create a company-wide consist consistency with the self-creating, self-updating data catalog. You need to give the uh, business analyst and the, the data analyst, data architect, all the users in, in the BI landscape and data intelligence landscape to create new assets, to link between them, and to add tagging, description, calculated description is very important. Who is the data steward? If, this, if the asset is sensitive or not sensitive. But you can choose only one of them. You can choose data discovery and data lineage and not data catalog. If you want to do a data literacy, you need to, to combine all those together. And of course, as I said before, leverage the automation to create one source of the truth uh, for your data. Includes all documentation about the data. Uh, it's passed from the world to maintenance everything in the Excel or, uh, or Word or PPT. Today we have a solution to do that and today we have automation. Uh, so this is very important in, uh, in data literacy. Summary before the question. Data is the core of business management and operation for the decision maker. It's very, very important to understand that we need to manage and, uh, and to understand that this is the core. Business take decision when they have data and uh, the data is very uh, important to manage it as well. Every enterprise is data driven because data is everywhere. It can be in IoT, it can be in the source systems, it can be in the reporting system, database, data warehouse, analysis services, everywhere. If you want to return, to optimize the, the ROI, the return of investment, we must invest in data literacy. If we, as at the beginning, uh, Dr. Seuss, if we are staying in the comfort zone, in the uh, waiting room, uh, waiting place, then nothing will happen. No one help us to manage the, the data if we not take an action and we invest in data literacy that will bring, optimize our eye for our organization. We need to take action, we need to define what we want to, to manage, how we want to manage, and also to find the right solution to manage the asset. And, data lit and this is very important, the last one is very important. Data literacy is not a project, 
This is not something, one event. It's not something that you can, um, you can say, okay, we will, we will put three, four people, three, four months, and then we will we'll have a data literacy. This is not something that, uh, that will work for you. You need to understand and you need to, to adapt the concept that data literacy is a lifestyle. This is something that will go with you all the time. Of course, we have the implementation and we have the initialized uh, um, first time for the implementation. But later on, you need to invest in the, in the data literacy. Otherwise, it will not be correct. It will not be accurate. And then the business decision maker and the business uh, people will not trust the data. And if they will not trust the data, they will not use your data literacy. And then all the work that you, you have been done go to, to garbage. So this is it. I, we have nine minutes for a question if you have. And uh, if not, it's okay. By the way, you can come to the booth if you have more questions for me or for uh, my colleague in, the, in Octopi about data lineage, data discovery, a data catalog. I can share with you some use cases from our customers that use uh, Octopi to implement data uh, literacy. Question or something? Okay. Thank you, everyone.